Welcome everybody to the third part of this tutorial series where we're building an AI car that drives autonomously. At this stage of the project, our car is already fully functional and we're able to drive the car using our arrow keys. In the next step, we're going to add some radars to the car. The purpose of the radars is to measure the distance between the car to the edge of the track. And these radars are going to provide the data that is used as an input to the neural network. So let's jump into the editor and continue from where we left off last episode. We're going to start off by creating a function call to the function radar within the update function of the car class. To keep things simple, we're only going to add one radar at the beginning. Now further below, we're going to create a new function called radar. In the radar function, we're going to create a variable called length and set it to zero. The length variable, as the name suggests, is going to be responsible for the length of the radar. The radars are going to be such that they start with a length of zero from the center of the car and get longer and longer until they reach the edge of the track. Next, we define the x and y coordinates to the center of the car. Then we're going to add a while loop and this while loop is going to be responsible for extending our radar until it hits the grassy area. So the first thing we're going to do within the while loop is we're going to increment the length by 1. Then we also need to calculate the endpoint of our radar. Finally, to visualize all this, we're going to draw the radar on our screen. The first component of our radar is a straight line that connects the center of our car to the endpoint of the radar. And the second component of the radar is simply going to be a dot at the very top of the radar. Alright, so now if we go ahead and run this, you can now see that there is a line that extends beyond the car. And this line is our radar. Now we can drive the car towards the edge of the track, towards the grassy area. And what you'll see is that when we get closer to the grassy area, the length of the radar gets shorter and shorter. Since one single radar isn't going to be enough of an input for our neural network, we need to make multiple radars. We're going to exchange this function call for a for loop, which is going to loop through five different radar angles and then we're going to call the function radar and as an argument we're going to pass in the angle of the radar. Now in our radar function we're going to add an additional argument, the radar angle, and then we're going to use this angle and account for it in the calculation of the endpoint of the radar. Now if we go ahead and run this you'll see that we have a total of five radars and with the help of these radars we can measure how far the car is away from the grassy area of the track. One thing that I still need to take care of is the collision mechanic of the game. And this collision mechanic is going to detect whenever the car leaves the street and goes onto the grass. So within the init function of the car class, we're going to add a variable called alive. And by default, when the car is initialized and starts on the street, we're going to set it to true. However, as soon as the car leaves the track and moves onto the grass, it is going to jump to false. In order to do that, we're going to go down to the update function and add a call to the collision function. And now further below, we're going to create this collision function. We're going to create a variable called length and set it equal to 40. This length is going to be the distance between the center of the car and the collision point. Then we're going to create two collision points. The first collision point is going to be located at the right headlight of the car and the second collision point is going to be located at the left headlight of the car. Next, we're going to create an if statement. And this if statement is going to check what the color underneath the collision points is. If the color under either collision point is detected as green, then we know that the car is on grass. And in that case, we're going to set the alive variable to false. Finally, for aesthetic purposes, we're going to add the collision points to our game by drawing them on our screen so we know where they are. So we're going to draw a circle at the point where the right collision point is and where the left collision point is. So now if we run the game, you'll see that at the front of the car there are two points. And these two points are the collision points of the car. The car dies whenever either of these points crosses into the green area of the map. And finally, to show you that the collision function does indeed work, I'm going to add a print statement within the if statement, which is going to print car is dead whenever the car crosses into the green area of the map. So now when we run the game again and I drive my car right into the grass, you'll see that in the console output it logs that the car is dead. 
More specifically, you'll see that when either one of the collision points represented by the blue dots on the front of the car goes into the green area of the map, then the console logs the car is dead. Alright, so that's it for this episode. In the next one, we're going to add the AI.